Prime Minister, welcome and thank, thanks for joining us today. It's always a pleasure to talk with you, Jasveer. Uh, Prime Minister, Canadians are still anxious and worried about the pandemic and uh, Dr. Tam says community transmission of the Omicron can rapidly escalate in coming days. Uh, and the people are not sure how long the government can provide them the support they need. So how, how would you respond to such concerns? First of all, from the very beginning of the pandemic, just there, we made a promise that we were going to have people's backs as long as it took, as much as it took. And that's exactly what we've done. And that's what we're going to continue to do. And not just because it's the nice thing to do, but also because it's the smart thing to do. Because when you support people through a crisis like this, we can get back to normal quicker once it's all done. So yes, this Omicron variant is scary and it's the last thing anyone needs uh, to have to worry again about another wave. But if we keep getting vaccinated and people get their booster shots and we get kids vaccinated and we continue to follow public health rules, we're going to make it through this winter and into a much better summer. So we just need to hang in there and people can know that the government will continue to be there to keep us safe. And we'll move on to another big issue. Housing is the number one concern for many Canadians. Uh, some reports suggest investors are driving up the housing prices. Multiple house ownership has become a kind of norm in many Ontario cities. Investors are involved in kind of hoarding of housing. So how can your government stop this trend which is uh, turning housing into a stock market-like activity? Well, uh, one of the things we know we need to do is cut down on housing speculation. Uh, and there are a number of things that we can do on that, uh, whether it's eliminating blind bidding uh, or uh, eliminating the impact of foreign buyers. Uh, and those are things that we're moving forward on. But there is no one secret to fixing the housing challenge. There's many things we have to do. We're talking about investing about $4 billion dollars uh, so municipalities can build more supply and cut red tape to move faster. Uh, we're going to be continuing to support first-time home buyers with initiatives like the first-time home buyers plan that is going to support them uh, to be able to get that down payment faster and uh, and have low lower monthly payments. There's a uh, Canada uh, uh, housing benefit uh, that helps low-income families afford their rent. There are many things we need to do, and we're going to continue doing them. Some of them uh, we're going to be announcing very soon as well. Uh, uh, Prime Minister, anti-flipping tax and ban on foreign investors were part of your party's pre-election -pre platform. When your government is planning to introduce these, these laws? Uh, these are things that we're moving forward. Uh, it's a priority for uh, the Minister of Housing, Minister Ahmed Hussain, uh, who will announce more details as the policy is finalized. One of the things we have to be careful of uh, in housing is that there are so many different factors that we have to make sure we're getting it right so anything we do actually helps people in the right way. But those are two policy elements we will be moving forward on. And moving on to immigration, uh, this is an open secret in some, some sectors in some region. LMIA system is completely hijacked by an excess of immigration consultants, businesses and, on, and also people who want to get PR. So it has become a kind of tool to sell Canadian PR. Would your government consider the review of this whole system? Well, first of all, the one thing that we are most concerned with is maintaining the integrity and the generosity of our immigration system. When there are loopholes, when crooked consultants can take advantage of people, um, that is not a good system. So we need to make sure we're continuing to strengthen our system and continuing to bring people in from all around the world so they can grow their lives and therefore grow our country uh, here in Canada. Uh, the other thing we need to do, as you say, is keep making sure that the temporary foreign worker program is not being abused, uh, is not being uh, uh, used for, for advantage uh, by certain people. So uh, we will continue to have a rigorous process uh, to make sure that we're preventing, detecting and deterring misuse of the program. Uh, Prime Minister, many truck drivers tell us that if they have to go to BC from Ontario, they, they prefer going via USA because the road link between Ontario and BC is very 
in very poor condition and dangerous. So we did a talk show on this recently and many people suggest government of Canada should come up with a national plan to create world-class road network linking east and west coast and other parts of the country. What do you think of uh, this idea? We have been investing massively in the Trans-Canada Highway over the past uh, many decades as a country and as a government we came forward with significantly more uh, infrastructure dollars to upgrade our uh, our commercial ties and indeed uh, 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 help with business. At the same time, people know that the uh, flooding in BC and the extreme climate uh, events have been uh, causing a lot more challenges to people. Uh, so we're going to be rebuilding there and we will be rebuilding better in partnership with the BC government to make sure uh, that uh, we have better roads that are keeping people safe, uh, whether they're truckers or just uh, just people driving their families back and forth. We need to make sure that Canadian roads are safe for everyone. Uh, this is my final uh, question, Prime Minister. There were several important promises in Liberal Party's election platform this year. And wh what's your top item on your agenda for 2022? Well, the first thing is to, to finish uh, the uh, child care agreements. We've signed uh, child care agreements with nine provinces and, uh, and uh, one territory, but the others are coming uh, right across the country that make sure we're going to cut child care costs in half for families next year uh, and uh, make $10 a day child care the reality for families right across the country uh, within five years. Uh, the challenge is Ontario is now the only remaining province that hasn't signed on uh, to our child care uh, agreements. Uh, we have billions of dollars waiting for Ontario. We just need, and, and we're hopeful we're going to get there, uh, but we need to make sure that families in Ontario get to save tens of thousands of dollars on the child care costs that so many of them are facing. And that's going to not just move forward to help kids, but it helps moms and families with difficult choices, and also it grows our economy. Uh, that is one of the big promises that we made that we committed to, and we're going to continue to deliver that. Uh, the other one is on housing. As we talked about, there is a significant crisis, and we need to be there to help families be able to afford their homes uh, and uh, young people get into the housing market. That's what we're going to stay focused on, even as we continue to work on fighting climate change, on growing the economy, on bringing in more immigration, on uh, reconciliation and fighting intolerance. These are all things we're going to do, and uh, that's, uh, that's what we're focused on now as we finish the fight against COVID uh, in the coming months. Prime Minister, thank you. Thank you very much again for your time today. Oh, it's always a pleasure to speak with you, Jasveer, and I want to thank again everyone at Red FM for continuing uh, to share such important information on how to keep safe uh, to uh, members of the community right across the country.